Daniel Harold Rowling, also known as the Gainesville Ripper, was an American serial killer who murdered five students in Gainesville, Florida. Rowling later confessed to raping several of his victims, committing an additional November 4, 1989, triple homicide in Shreveport, Louisiana, and attempting to murder his father in May 1990. In total, Rowling confessed to killing eight people. Rowling was sentenced to death for the murders in 1994. He was executed by lethal injection in 2006. Early Years Rowling was born in Shreveport, Louisiana. He had a difficult upbringing. His father, James Rowling, told him that he was unwanted from birth. Rowling's father was a Shreveport police officer who abused him. His mother, Claudia, and later, his brother, Kevin. In one incident, Danny's mother went to the hospital after claiming her husband tried to make her cut herself with a razor blade. Claudia made repeated attempts to leave her husband but always returned. In one example of the senior Rowling's sense of discipline, he pinned Danny to the ground, handcuffed him, then had police take his son away because he was embarrassed by him. As a teenager and young adult, Rowling was arrested several times for robberies in Georgia and cops spying on a cheerleader. Getting dressed as an adult, he had trouble trying to assimilate into society and hold down a steady job. At one point, he worked as a waiter at Pancho's restaurant in Shreveport, Louisiana. In May 1990, he attempted to kill his father during a family argument in which his father lost an eye and an ear. Serial Killings In August 1990, Rowling murdered five students, one student from Santa Fe College and four from the University of Florida, during a burglary and robbery spree in Gainesville, Florida. He mutilated his victims' bodies, decapitating one. He then posed them, sometimes using mirrors. In the early morning hours of August 24, 1990, Rowling broke into the apartment shared by 17-year-old university freshman Sonia Larson and Christina Powell, finding Powell asleep on the downstairs couch. He stood over her briefly but did not wake her up, choosing instead to explore the upstairs bedroom where he found Larson also asleep. Rowling murdered Larson, first taping her mouth shut to stifle her screams and then stabbing her to death. She died while trying to fend him off. Rowling then went back downstairs, taped Powell's mouth shut, bound her wrists together behind her back and threatened her with a knife as he cut her clothes off of her. He then raped her and forced her face down onto the floor, where he stabbed her five times in the back. Rowling posed the bodies in sexually provocative positions and left the apartment. A day later, on Saturday, August 25, 1990, Rowling broke into the apartment where 18-year-old Krista Hoyt lived by prying open a sliding glass door with a cobar knife and a screwdriver. But she was not home. He waited in the living room for her to return. At 11 a.m., she entered the apartment and Rowling surprised her from behind, placing her in a chokehold. After she had been subdued, he taped her mouth shut bound her wrists together and led her into the bedroom, where he cut the clothes from her body and raped her. As in the Powell murder, he forced her face down and stabbed her in the back, rupturing her heart. He then decapitated the body and posed her head on a shelf facing the corpse, adding to the shock of whoever discovered her. By now the murders had attracted widespread media attention and many students were taking extra precautions such as changing their daily routines and sleeping together in groups. Because the spree was happening so early in the fall semester, some students withdrew their enrollment or transferred to other schools. 23-year-old Tracy Poles was living with Manny Tabawata, also 23, her barely 200 pounds roommate. On Monday, August 27, 1990, Rowling broke into the apartment by prying open the sliding glass door with the same tools he had used previously. 
Rowling found Tabuat asleep in one of the bedrooms and, after a struggle with the young man, eventually killed him. Hearing the commotion, Poles went down the hall to Tabuata's bedroom and saw Rowling. She attempted to barricade herself in her bedroom, but Rowling broke through the door. Rowling taped her mouth and wrists, cut off her clothing and raped her, before turning her on to her belly and stabbing her three times in the back. Rowling posed Paul's body but left Tabuata's in the same position in which he had died. Although law enforcement authorities initially had very few leads, police did identify two suspects. When a University of Florida student, Edward Humphrey, who had a history of mental illness and bore numerous scars on his face from a car accident, making him an ideal image when discussing news about the investigation. His photo was shown repeatedly by media outlets. Authorities publicly cleared Humphrey of all charges after Rowling's arrest. Later in 1990, Rowling was arrested in Ocala on a burglary charge and, in the course of that investigation, his tools were matched to marks left at the Gainesville murder scenes. The small, one-man camp where he was living was in a wooded area located near the apartment. Complexes frequented by students, including those of the victims, there, investigators discovered recordings Rowling had made of himself singing country songs that he had composed and audio diaries alluding to the crimes. He was charged with several counts of murder in November 1991. The two men the police had earlier identified as suspects were released and cleared of any involvement in the crimes. Rowling was finally brought to trial by Alachua County State Attorney Len Register nearly four years after the murders. Rowling claimed his motive was to become a superstar, in much the same way as Ted Bundy. In 1994, before his trial could get underway, Rowling unexpectedly pled guilty to all charges. Subsequently, State Attorney Rod Smith presented the penalty phase of the prosecution. Rowling was sentenced to the death penalty on each count. During his trial, Core TV conducted an interview with his mother from her home. During the recording, his father could be heard shouting off-camera. Rowling was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder and paraphilia. Death Rowling was executed by lethal injection at Florida State Prison on October 25, 2006, after the U.S. Supreme Court rejected a last-ish appeal. Legacy Rowling has been the subject of several written works. His murders inspired screenwriter Kevin Williamson to pen the script of the popular 1996 slasher film Scream. Sandra London collaborated with him on the making of a serial killer. The true story of the Gainesville murders in the killer's own words. Rowling was also the subject of an episode of Body of Evidence. From the case files of Dale Hinman, a court TV show, transmitted as Crime Scene USA, Body of Evidence on Discovery Channel in the UK, and an episode of Forensic Factor titled Killing Spree which originally aired on Discovery Channel Canada and was rebroadcast in America on the Science Channel. Rowling was also the subject of a 2010 episode of Cold Blood, and was briefly mentioned in a 2012 episode of Motives and Murders, entitled Not Again, and in a 2015 episode of Nightmare Next Door, entitled Daylight Abduction, where murder victim Sonia Larson's brother Jim Larson experienced the rape and murder of his wife Carla Larson on the Investigation Discovery Channel. While on death row at Florida State Prison, Rowling wrote songs and poems and drew pictures. His works have been referred to as an example of murderabilia.